My name is Jonathan Stewart, and I'm here to present how to do some winter camping, maybe some tips that might help you guys get through the, the winter months. Um, it's a lot of fun to camp in the winter time. I really enjoy it. There's no bugs, not a lot of people around, and it's fairly easy if done right. So one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to look for a site that's not at the top of the mountain and not in the lowest part, because we know cold air will sink down to the lowest level. So I just picked this spot right in my yard here. And uh, one of the first things I'm gonna do to set this up to pitch a tent, especially if it's deeper snow, is I'm gonna wanna move some of the snow over to the side so that we could possibly use it as a windbreak or even insulate the tent with it if we had enough snow. So one of the first things I'm gonna end up doing is just taking a broom or a shovel and just moving it all to one side. That'd be a pretty decent place to pitch a tent. Some people might say it's not very level, but what I really want is I almost want a little bit of a pick so the cold air will run out of the tent and away from the tent and down the hill. So all I did was lay down a tarp here and I, I folded it over so I have double protection. This is kind of important try and insulate yourself from the ground as much as possible. That ground is just gonna to wanna to suck the heat right out of you. And after we pitch this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss some tent pads or some uh, sleeping pads and the R value and R factor. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is I have snow pants on and you brush them off and they're dry. When you're camping outside in the winter, one of the most important things that you have to do is remain dry. I also noticed when I first started the video, I had a heavy jacket on. Sun's out, zero wind. Right now I need to manage my clothing to make sure that I don't create a huge sweat and get soaking wet underneath and then try and recoup, recoup some of the heat that I've lost during this time frame. So what I do is I shed gear and I make sure it's in a dry location and I'll put it on later as I start to cool down. I'll also bring another change of clothing so I can get changed into dry clothes. What might seem like it's dry, might not be dry. It might still have moisture in it. So you wanna try and stay away from cottons as much as possible. Your wools are really good and synthetic materials. And we wanna do a three layer system. We wanna do a base layer, a mid layer, and an exterior layer. So staying dry is the name of the game when it comes to winter camping. So now we have our we have our tent pitched up and I'll show you the inside. So right off the bat you see that I kind of cleared snow away from this area. So that way we're not constantly dragging snow in. Another thing you'll notice is this is a four season tent or a three or four season tent. And the rain fly goes all the way down. Which what that's going to do is going to keep all the warm air in. Some people argue about the venting. But you almost need to vent it to get rid of the condensation. Now that might be a little bit uh, extreme as far as what we want to do with it. So we might move that in or out to exhaust some of the air. Right now it's pretty steel air. So it's not something that we really have to worry about. But what's going to happen is that's going to actually warm up with condensation and warmer air. And then all the colder, denser air is going to come out from underneath here. And I told you about being on a slope earlier. It's gonna end up all coming out here by my feet instead of up by my head. And the other thing is gonna run downhill. It's gonna run away from the tent. This has a vestibule, which is nice for taking off your boots. But the reality of it is, even if you throw a garbage bag in there, you throw your boots in there, you want as much stuff in here as you can possibly get in there. Because what's gonna happen is that's gonna retain some amount of heat. I turn around, I throw a moving blanket in here on the floor, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's just, an insulation factor that works really well. They're readily available and they're very reasonable, cheap. And then I have an old military wool blanket and I'll actually put some um, sleeping mats underneath it. I'll probably put two sleeping mats underneath it and this will work for zero degrees, no problem at all. If you have a 20 degree sleeping bag, maybe you wanna get two sleeping bags or you might wanna bring a blanket with you. It's kinda hard to backpack everything in you almost have to do more of a truck camping style. 
camping in the winter time, but just bring, you know, if you think you need four blankets, you're better off to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. Um, pretty much it. Try and keep the insides as clean as you possibly can. And uh, don't be afraid to use hand warmers or the Nalgene bottle. A lot of people put uh, boiled water in Nalgene bottles and they throw them down in their their back or in their uh, their sleeping bag along with the, the clothes they're going to wear tomorrow. Socks, underwear, uh, pants, sweatshirt, whatever. As long as there's no moisture, throw it in your sleeping bag. It'll keep you warm through the night. I like to use hand warmers personally. You light them off about eight hours before, put them in your sleeping bag, and they'll last through the whole night. No problem. About an hour before you go to bed. Then the other thing is, is to have activities. It gets dark now, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Here it is. It's uh, 4.30 and I'm watching the sun set right now. So what are we going to do for the next seven, eight hours? Who knows? Um, that puts us at 10 o'clock. One of the things I like to do is maybe if there's enough ice on the pond, we go out and do astronomy, look up at the stars. It's a beautiful time of the year where the skies are just very, very clear. And you can really make out a lot of constellations and stuff, but you got to keep them active. Another thing is fires. Um, the fires, you don't want to build a huge fire that you melt everything around. You need to have a moderate fire with, it's got to be controlled. So you know what, you're keeping yourself warm, your mind is at peace and everything like that and you're enjoying it, but you don't want to be so, you don't want to be so warm that you start to sweat. Then you become wet and it becomes a problem. When you go to bed, you want to strip out the clothes you were in for the day and put on new clothes to sleep in and then change them again in the morning. And you want to have at least one change of clothes for every single day you're out. Protein. You want to have a high protein diet for this. The carbohydrates are going to burn off real fast. Protein is just going to burn from your body at a slow rate and it's going to keep you warm all night long. So that's very important. Another thing is, is to hydrate. You don't think that you lose you know, water from your body, but believe it or not, you actually expel just as much water, if not more in the winter than you do in the summer. So you want to constantly hydrate yourself. And the other thing is go to the bathroom. You don't, you want to pee as much as possible, especially before you go to bed, just because you don't want your body to constantly be trying to burn energy just to keep your bladder at 98.6 degrees. Instead of the marshmallows at night, have a hot dog or some type of protein that'll keep you warm through the night. As you can see, the rain flag goes all the way down to the ground on all four sides. We have two vestibules. We have the ventilation totally opened up. If you go inside here, which I left the door open, but you can see I have a moving blanket in there. And that's just taking up some area for me to stand on without my feet getting cold. And then as you go over, I have a wool blanket and I would sleep on that side and I'd come in on this side and try to keep this as free of debris as possible. We have a pretty good air chamber here which will keep us fairly warm. And if you look, that's just our basic tent. Another thing is, is a smaller tent, the better off you are. It's easier to heat up a smaller area than to have a big 12 person tent during COVID right now, having one person in 12 man tent, you're gonna freeze. And that's pretty much it. My little tent, and you can see the sun's going down right there. And uh, this is Winter Camping 101. Thanks for joining us.